treated them like adults. He engaged them in the problem. And what he did was absolutely unbelievable because you then had virtually every team member of every shift just totally re-engaging in their part of the work. And um, I remember a, a classic outcome of this when we actually heard it happening. We'd heard word that for the first time in the history of Volvo, the production line had been stopped by a member of the shop floor crew. And what had happened, one of the shifts had realised that, I don't know, I'll make this up now because I don't remember exactly the part, but let's say it was the part that goes into the um, um, air conditioning unit. The parts that had come were faulty. And the shift members knew this. And they said to their shift leader, um, we need to stop here because these are faulty. And the shift leader initially said, are you crazy? We have got to install 150 of these in this shift because that's our target. That's what we're being held accountable for. And the shift, the members of the crew said, no, we're not. That's not our job. Soren Yule was down here two weeks ago and told us that our job is to do whatever we need to do to do the right thing for the company. And he said, you're right. And they stopped, they stopped the, uh, the plant. It never happened before. Now, actually the story of that going around just empowered, had such an impact across the whole production unit. Productivity levels went like this. Um, defaults went like this. And yeah, at that particular occasion, they lost probably eight hours of, of factory time. But how much would they have lost if it got right through to the end and the safety engineers realised, we've got to send, we've got to break down all of these cars and go back again. This is what leaders do. This is how you change the culture. After seven years, you'll get to do it again because nothing lasts longer than seven years. <laughs> and I'm sorry for taking much too longer with that. Japanese, I'm not sure. Swedish, absolutely certain. Adult-adult relationships makes a massive difference in the way in which people engage. Yeah, well, you know, um, I'm sure you realise you don't have an exclusive franchise upon the paternalistic nature of your culture and society. <laughs> um, uh, Spain's pretty good at it too. Um, and the concepts that I'm talking about here um, we're piloting and experimenting in some really great Spanish companies. Um, and it is challenging. Where it is actually working is amongst this generational shift where you've got um, uh, 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 technology is driving things where basically you've just got no choice. You cannot, you cannot, you'll never be fast enough when you're working in an area of technology to operate in the same old way. The chain of command decision making um, in those kinds of environments, you'll just get killed. The market will, will kill you. So it's in that environment that these kinds of concepts are becoming um, uh, really deeply embraced. And particularly, it's usually amongst within those industries that you have got uh, an average age worker in their, 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 their 20s up to, th up, up to 30s um, who are expecting it and are, and, and, and are up for it. And even then, um, how we found, and there are a variety of ways to do this, but you'll never get it done across the board like this. You have to do it in small parts. It's like, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one mouthful at a time. Um, the advice that I would have in this is you've got to pick the place, you've got to pick the industry, you've got to identify where it will, where it will come, you've got to find that where the, the currents are already flowing and that will be a generational flow. Um, the market will also enable it and then think big, see how and create your vision on how this can happen right across the entire enterprise, but then start small. Take it in one place where you understand it, where you can refine it, based upon 
the realization of a vision of it being everywhere, but do it in one place, and then scale it fast. Scale it up, leverage it up so that it goes right across the board. Um, what it does require is absolute compliance from the top. Uh, it requires your CEO and it requires your senior management to practice this relentlessly, to give each other feedback and for it to be completely, totally understood and bought in from that place. If you don't have that as a precondition, you're going to get killed if you try to do this. If you do have that, um, you can achieve a great deal. Now what that says, although our experience, mine personally, is with global and multinational corporations, it's got to be a whole lot easier to do this in a smaller enterprise. And so a smaller, perhaps a family enterprise um, that is facing a generational shift in a family business, um, uh, that's where uh, you can possibly negotiate and find a way to do it. Other than that, I'd be interested to hear how you might do it. <laughs> what would you suggest? Well, let me, let me talk about that, whether it's our formula, but the methodology which we embrace with these companies is based upon um, uh, a set of principles about, about leadership and about where change happens. And that is in that leadership is personal. And so is a mentality. You can't change somebody's mentality. A person can only change their own mentality. Um, uh, so leadership is personal. Fundamentally, it's about relationships. And not the least being the relationship that you have with yourself. That, you know, I'm not a kid, actually. I'm an adult. That mentality, that's a conversation that you need to have as well as the conversation you need to have perhaps with your, with your own parents or with your boss, etc. And I've already mentioned that the conversation is the relationship. And so how to deliver and work within an organization around through conversations rather than controls. But the levels that we work on is at the first level in any of the institutions that we work with, and we even did this at McDonald's at the time when their share price fell to just below $11. Um, uh, from $38 when their business almost just completely went bust in 2002. Uh, we started by getting people to develop a sense of their own self. Um, the program that we have that Javier referred to as self-managing leadership, but it's about leading yourself and taking people through a process where they're actually able to understand their own context. And yes, certainly their work context, but also the rest of the context. You know, what's going on at home? What's going on with their house? How do you want to live? And basically what it is, is developing a strategic plan for yourself. Giving people the opportunity to reflect upon big questions around purpose, around their own values, much before we got them to start talking about the company's values. A person has got to engage with their own values. They have to know what they stand for. Before you try and get buy-in to a company's mission, a person needs to understand what their own purpose is and their own intention. Whether it's actually about taking or is it perhaps about giving? What is it that lights you up? So the starting point for any work within the organization is work around the cells so that they know how to find a field of conversations with themselves and that that course is delivered within a context of conversations with colleagues. Um, that has a very, very powerful impact on it. And Javier here is one of the best exponents of the delivery of that program. L building from that and segueing is how do you build from that experience into the way in which you lead in your proximity? And in the work context, that's how do you lead a high-performing team based upon these principles of empowerment, of delegated authority, not just delegated responsibility. How do you lead with an adult-adult relationship and mentality? And from there then into complexity. How do you deal with extremely high levels of complexity? And each level builds upon the other. And we build from that up to the fourth level is about how do you play a different role in society and community. Um, and 
this actually starts a bigger conversation about what it is that we are actually doing here. Is it just making money for the shareholders? Or are we actually part of a solution or are we part of a problem of what's going on in our ecology, our environment, our society? So you start to develop a sense of the whole. And it was um, Albert Einstein who defined his formula for innovation, for breakthrough, in four steps. The first, he said, is that you have to understand what's actually going on. And he used the metaphor of the need to get off the dance floor and stand on the balcony, and see the big picture. And this is what we don't do. This is why we had a financial crisis. This is why we've got environmental degradation. Nobody thinks beyond the terms of their own term. They don't think beyond the context of their shareholders. So if you can develop a concept in which people are actively trained to think long term, big picture, understand context, it's most fundamental actually in leadership. 